Um, and could you discuss the disparities between urban, rural, suburban schools or income levels? And Joe mentioned low income environments um, relating to the state of our current school buildings and investments in them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the primary point here is that the you know, school investment reflects the wealth of the community because the vast majority of funding going to our school buildings comes from the local tax base. So where you have not very much money in the local economy, that is where you have problems within your school buildings. And that can happen anywhere. That can happen in urban areas, rural areas, et cetera. But in the last day of our schools um, report, we did see a really awful um, disparity in rural schools, small rural schools. Um, we saw that they invest in capital improvements at almost half of the level of, of the national average. So 2.3 million or so on average per school compared to 4.3 million per school um, on average nationally. So the, the investment is it, gap is huge for our rural schools. And that, again, is because of this local tax base reliance. Um, and then they also are spending on maintenance operations, they're spending... Um, a lot more per student, but they're spending a lot less per school because the schools are smaller and they're spread out. And so it just, it costs a lot of money to maintain a, a big land area school district with schools all over the place that are, you know, not very many students. So that's another odd disparity that we see that really is affecting students on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so it's, you know, in places where we see states stepping up to supplement local funding, um, these disparities are, are less. Um, it's the states that, that don't contribute to their local schools that where the, the local wealth is the, you know, single um, determinant of the school building quality. Great. Thank you. Mark, I want to add one thing that might build up and that might be interesting for the listeners. Um, you know, there was a, uh, in terms of we've been relying on, thankfully, groups are doing these kind of state of our schools reports from nonprofits and otherwise. And the federal government really hasn't done a really good job here. But there was bipartisan legislation just tried to put forward um, a new act, the Indoor Air Quality and Healthy Schools Act, just from a couple weeks ago. And one of the things that's in that act is it's going to establish a regularly updated national assessment of IAQ in schools and child care facilities. So this is something we've been kind of flying blind, We're relying on you know good nonprofits to kind of give us a glimpse into what's happening on national scale. But I'm encouraged to see bipartisan legis bipartisan uh, moves towards you know figuring out what's going on in our schools by having this national uh, assessment. 